Amen. 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 Again, good night to each and every one of you. Welcome to Refresh. It's our very first, very first annual launch. You know, things don't usually start smooth when it's the first time. It will be rocky. But with Jesus in the vessel, we will smile at the storm. Who here agrees? Shout a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're just going to run into the program quickly with our consecration. We want the Lord to move tonight, but before that we have to get ourselves consecrated. There is also a general rule, and let me enforce that rule. When you walk into the presence of the Lord in the sanctuary, you're asked to please put your phones on silent. I know some of us may have our Bibles on our phone, but please put your phones on Silent. Sometimes it can be a distraction, and we don't want to be distracted in these days. Amen? Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Now we're just going to sing a little prayer chorus, and we're going to consecrate ourselves, and we're going to ask after this Sister Harris to do the opening scripture. Praise God. Welcome into this place.
likes us an everlasting father. The Prince of Peace, the God who spoke, and you declare that this ministry belongs. You declare that this move will have its way, God. Lord, thank you for kind of saving this man. Lord, cover those who are on their way. Lord, remember those who are joining in by the various platforms tonight. We pray, God, that you consecrate this ground. We repent of every sin, every thought, every habit.
to read this night's scripture. Praise the Lord. Praise, it. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for her. Put your hands together and welcome to the house in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise God. Good night, everyone. Good night. Please turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to the end.
Michelle with that encouragement. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for him. Put your hands together for him.
destroyed the people of that area and put other gods. But then it says in the scripture that he will not throw us to pieces, he heals us. And he goes up and says, he will injure us, he buys up our wounds. What we want to say, I want to understand from this, is that God see our faults, see our weaknesses, see our blemishes, see the sin we make that we have. That the same way to give us a little bit of a little chance. So doing that, he allows us to be healed, allows us to be whole, just like a, a potter. Right? You know the potter that grew the clay, grew the saw to make clay to make cross empty, and he shaped it in the way that he wants us to be. And the same way God wants to shape us in the way he wants us to be, in the way he wants us to relate to him, to relate to each other. So God breaks us to pieces, spiritually. Let us sit down and reflect upon him. Whatever else is healing us. Because of Isaiah 13 verse 5, he said that it was good for our foundations. It was good for our own cookies. Chapter 2 of our own principles upon him. And with his child, we are healed. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he was crucified for us. Before he was crucified, he was beaten, he was scourged. The same Jew that he came to deliver. They gave him up. Right? They they go back and they stop him for a thief, a murderer, a prisoner, for Barabbas. And even when Pilate said, I don't follow Pilate, he falls on him. Yet they still say, Please be kind, he was murdered. And this was far, look, smash, I was far 39 times. And by his whooping people, his back was torn up. And by our own things, he was saying, He tore up the pieces. Right? So the what he got was for us. But even in our time now, we feel pain and suffering. We don't feel sickness, we don't feel love one, we don't feel disappointment, anything. It does not compare to the pain of Jesus Christ when he went Before he even go on the cross, he was on the cross. Because that pain and that infatuation we call a perfect he went through. Find a sin of the entire world for us, right? And by the rules, you will do for our enemies, right? We are here because of his stripes. So in verse 1, he says, We are here because of his stripes. We are here for after the fourth piece. And we're almost at time, but it's like when someone gets injured at the first. Because my nurse and the doctor are, if you're at home, you're a person to get it. The person to treat me, to get the band aid, I get the all the different things, I get the antibiotics. I am I am honored, right? To heal the cross, to prevent the blood from cancer this poor. But Jesus Christ, when I was on the cross, he prayed for us, right? He begged for us. Now in verse 2 it says that you will revive us again. You will refresh us. You will, you will restore us, right? So I can go up into his presence. Because in his presence there are things that charge. At his right hand there are prisoners. Then I wonder why is it that in verse 1 we say that in the church of the Lord they can pour the pieces and injure us. But I reflect on it and I reflect on it and say, King David in Psalm 51, it is verse 5, he says, Pray for me to be so. And I remember, I was there at first, when I read that verse, I said, Pray for me to be so. And I said, Pray for me to be so. And I said, Pray for me to be so. And I said, Pray for me it is very bitter. And it's like a herb to take to clean your blood, cleanse it. So in this personal scripture, David is asking for God to cleanse it, right? And all of the people are cleansed by the shame of God's blood, but by asking Jesus to wash our sins with his blood. And it's not the blood of the lamb or any animal that was being sacrificed in the Old Testament, never in the New Testament. And Jesus has come to this earth to give us a new program, to give us a new, a better charm in our life. So him coming and going through all the persecution, dying on the cross of our sins, was a way to show us that we can come up as me. Right? Even though we come to church and we pray for the worship of people to each other, and all that, we feel good, yes, and we feel happy, and we feel blessed. But then there's the other time we sing, we fall short of things of God, the glory of God. Nevertheless, even every time we see God does not satisfy us, I say, can 
them as a leader. I don't know about it. Keep on pursuing us, keep on following us, keep on reminding us in the scripture. Sometimes you have a brother or a sister in the church. Sometimes you have a role to remind us of who he is. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has poured and given to us. 
He has smitten and he has blind as well. I also have a good news translation and it says, People say, let us return to the Lord. He has hurt us, but he will be sure to keep us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage our wounds, won't he? So my message is taken from Jeremiah 18, verse 1 to 12.
together while we're speaking the people of Judah and Jerusalem in their final warning before proceeding to destroy their cities. He said, No, then tell the people of Judah and Jerusalem that I'm making plans against them and getting ready to punish them. And in verse 12 it says, And the people answer by saying, No, why should we? We will all be stubborn and as evil as we want to be. These persons were not just being stubborn and evil, they were being disobedient and rebellious to the instructions of God. And in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, the word says, If my feet, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from me, then will I hear from heaven, and forgive their sins, and I will appeal to their love. Oh, we can replace the word turn to be reformed from your wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin, and I will heal their life. We young people should be all deny ourselves in order for us to be reformed. As it states in Matthew 16, verse 24, that Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And also when it reads in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, seek my face, be reformed from their wicked ways, then they will not hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their sin. These are my words. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Okay, she'll be doing her thing. Put your hands together for her. Church. 
church that you know he he was from. So we're here tonight just to share, you know, about marriage. Because the Bible says he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and receive favor from the Lord. I just want to say, where all the young men who are not married, I want you to stand up. If you're not married, just stand up. Thank you. 
sexual relationship with our partners, right? And that is understandable. But no, we are court, no, we are in church, no, we are Christian. And there is someone that you are courting. Don't try to figure out. I wonder if. Right? So, one is clearly 
to um, the wife of the king is it the, the, um, the woman of God? Is it the mother? You know, sometimes when we have a son and like, trust with Eve, all of us are going to take a turn. So you have to know how to I my turn, take on the woman, so she can go away. So it's all coming together as me. And it's also my turn as well. So, yeah, uh, do ministry together. As I said, ministry, marriage is a ministry. And quickly, when I when we start home, I was going to Bible school, and in 2017, the Lord gave me the vision to start home ministry. We interview people, share testimony, evangelize, we all start on YouTube. And, but in 2017, that means you could not start until my wife comes together because it's four of I said yes. It was in 2020 we actually come together and start our total ministry of our first interview. So it was always, you know, as the man, the man of God, husband, God would give him the vision and the wife was there to help him carry it all as the vision. So it's like that. It's a two and two together, help each other. Help. The man ministry are the woman ministry because we ministry together. And the last one is support each other. Although you know we have a total ministry, she has her own ministry and stuff that she do. And I'm one of the things that I can do. So how we can all come together, help out her in her ministry also. Help out each other. So it's all about support. You know, not you know sometimes it's a more a submission. Sometimes I feel like we are men, we must be on top. But submission is something that very deep into the ground. Submission is like this pole that holds up the structure. So the woman is the one who holds up the structure. Where does the man to talk about women? So we're not a woman, we need to come out. So that's why women are so strong and they can manipulate and manage certain things. So it's all about coming together as a
God, the highest praise in the house tonight. Because we show the great and mighty awesome God. And we are in the presence of God and we are in the presence of God. I want to thank you for the heart of God and the mind of God tonight. Marriage is one of them. Bring your faith. 
come here tonight and if you're going through some sickness, come on. I rock with Shanda, I rock with Shanda, I rock with Shanda. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I
There's someone in the house tonight. I'm talking about from another person. I don't know who they are, but right now, there's not seen six young people run up here right now. Just six young women, just run up here right now. Six of you, just run up, just run up here. Six of you, quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. The devil's plan is to destroy. But God said, come to give you life and life more abundantly. I'm speaking the salvation, I'm speaking the deliverance, I'm speaking the election for school, for purpose, for job. Do not settle for less. Hallelujah. I'm seeing promotion in the spiritual realm. I'm seeing some of I see some of your 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 mother. Hold on your video in the house of God. Hold on your video, Christian. Your mother is a Christian. Hmm? You are the right place at the right time. Tonight, I'm praying for you tonight for salvation. Do you know what I'm trying to say? He said, I have been here for a song. I've seen some relationships that will be in. And God said, I have been here for some song. The one that you are in right now, I'm going to take it out of my mouth. The name is the Lord.
God, who was he was, was there? Constantly coming, coming to church on a Sunday. I was a farmer bush. But where did hear this thing? I've met girls who have it. But think the normal, as they would have said. However, I couldn't stop from coming to church. When I came to church, about to kill a Sunday, the same soon that I wore to my father's funeral. When I stepped into the church, the Holy Ghost said to me that this is the last day we'll be just like that. So God, you are right. You know. My time, my time. So the Holy Ghost was in the midst. And I remember I ran on the altar and Minister June Francis. I bless God for her. When I went on the altar, she loved me. She brought me to the back. She had me on this blue field. And they started to pull me from left to right. They started to call on my mind. I felt something. Yes. Glory. I wanted to. Jesus. I was working with Wes. Yes. I said, God, the true purpose, where one bird was in a meeting, I'm working in a question. So you have to have a shift me. I was in a covered war and cut in my hair because I lost my hair. When I went to Arthur, I met this man and he interviewed. He was like my daughter. I said, No, I'm not your daughter. I'm going to be an employee. He said, She's fierce, he said, I'm no one. obvious. So he was just saying that, Listen to me. You have a mom. I'm a now. God is calling me in a season as this. He said that I'm going to tell you something. I said, before you tell me, I'm going to come in here. So that I can't come on the After the interview was finished, he said that he's going to call Wes and all the other places that I've worked before. I said that if they are the only ones in Africa, I'm going to because you have to work on it. He'll come in the evening. While I was at my home, I called my mother. I said, Mommy, you wish come to me now. There's no cup in the air. She started to cry. I said, we don't cry for I don't will have it has to be done. When I came to church in my airport, I still wasn't comfortable changing over into a female. I said, God, you have to do something, you know, because my friends and my family, they look up to me. They're awaiting my arrival to bring them back to Christ. Hallelujah. When I came to church, I started to wear. Before that, the lady that I was living with, I told her that, listen now, you have a change in the club. One of you has to go home, no one of me. But then you have to go home. She said, so when we go, when we have a tech, when we have a tech, I said, you can't take everything, man. God is start over. And I went by my mother for one week. Say she Christ. Sunday, the Holy Ghost beat me to go by my house. And when I went down here, Lord God, the only thing we could have seen a friend uh, as to a um, better TV. So we started to look. So I said, God, everything will work hard for God. Come, Mr. John Francis. And I said, see, everything done in my house. She said, God, I don't bless you. She said, you are right, God, God, I don't bless you. Oh, God. I went to bed numerous of nights, hungry. My family didn't know. I know that he 
God. Trust God. I can do it. Anybody can do it.
The very fact that you are at the stage of repentance means that you have recognized that what you did is not pleasing to God, hence the feeling of regret. But it does not stop there. To attain your repentance, you have to make a turn from such actions and make up your mind that you will never do it again. It's just like somebody who wants silence. I know you're not supposed to eat ice cream, but they still eat ice cream and they just eat every single time. And then, every single time they eat ice cream, they get sick. And you say, why ice cream never sick? And then I want people to eat it again. But you still don't eat ice cream the next day, and you're sick again. And you say, Yeah, man. 
today. We ask everyone to please stand in honor of the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the blessed Holy Ghost, we Lord. And I will hand over to Pastor Kevin Allen. Receive you as he comes in Jesus. Come on, man, receive him. Put your hands together. Jesus Christ. 